Okay, now, you've got your unit circle right in front of you. So most of these are going to be pretty simple to deal with, but I'm going to talk through my logic when I'm trying to do it without the unit circle sitting right in front of me. And that's the ultimate goal, is knowing how to do this without having a copy of the unit circle right in front of you. Uh, <clears throat> but for right now, you can kind of rely upon that. So when I see this sign of 3 pi over 4, the first thing that I do is I look at the denominator. Okay? I look at the denominator. The denominator is 4. So I know that all of my angles that are over 4, sine and cosine, are both square root 2 over 2. Now I just have to decide uh, what my sine is going to be. S-I-G-N. Is it going to be positive? Is it going to be negative? The 3 over 4 is less than 1. So that means I'm in the second quadrant. So that means my y coordinate is positive. Well, sine is the y coordinate. So this is the positive square root 2 over 2. Now, like I said, you've got your unit circle right in front of you. You can look at it and you look at the y coordinate and you can give me that answer. But that's my thought process when I'm going through this. Now, cosine of negative pi over 3. So once again, I look at the denominator, it's over 3, <clears throat> excuse me, it's over 3, all of my over 3 angles, the cosine or the x coordinate is 1 half. Now I have to decide, is that positive or negative 1 half? Well, negative pi over 3, remember negative angles, we rotate clockwise, so that puts me in the fourth quadrant, and my cosine is still positive there. Now, when you are looking at your unit circle, here's what I suggest you do when you're having to find uh, trig values of negative angles. Find the positive angle. Okay? Go to positive pi over 3, and then you go directly below it. And that is going to give you the negative angle. Okay? Go to positive pi over 3, and then go directly below it, and that's going to give you the value for negative pi over 3. All right, now, tangent. Well, we didn't have tangent on our unit circle. We only have sine and cosine. Well, it turns out that tangent of any angle can be found by putting your sine ratio over your cosine ratio, okay? So not only is tangent equal to the opposite over the uh, adjacent, it can also be found by putting the sine over the cosine. So we need to go to pi over 2. Well, pi over 2 is 90 degrees. It's right there at the top. Okay. Sine is the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate of that one is 1. The x-coordinate is 0. What happens when we divide by 0? Bad things happen, it's undefined. Okay, now every once in a while we end up with uh, an angle that is greater than 2 pi. Well, guess what? Just find its coterminal angle. Okay, 3 pi is greater than 2 pi, so remember to find coterminal angles. We subtract, uh, in terms of radians, we subtract 2. So that is equivalent to the tangent of pi. Pi is the negative x-axis. So its y-coordinate is 0. Its x-coordinate is negative 1. What happens when you divide 0 by a number? It's always 0. Okay. Um, one way that I remember this is uh, you can do 0 over k and you can do n over 0. So 0 over k, k being the constant is ok. A number over 0, no way. One way to remember which one is undefined and which one is 0. Alright, what if we've got three secrets? Well, which trig ratio is cosecant related to? Do I remember? Sine. Remember the cos don't go together. So cosecant goes with sine, not cosine. 
So this is equal to 1 over the sine of 7 pi over 6. Okay, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So it's going to be 1 over the sine, or I can look at the sine ratio and flip it over. So, uh, sometimes it's easier one way as compared to the other. So 7 pi over 6, where's that at? 7 over 6, greater than or less than 1? Greater than, just a little bit greater than 1. So that means we're in the third quadrant. Over 6 angles for sine is 1 half. But in the third quadrant, sine is negative. So if we flip over negative 1 half, we get negative 2. Okay, it's the reciprocal of the sine. So if sine is negative 1 half, we flip it over, it's negative 2. All right, secant. Secant goes with cosine. I'm just going to write it below it because I want to look at it from the perspective of flipping it over instead of putting one over the number. You get the same result. It's just a little bit easier to just flip it over. Okay, negative 5 pi over 4. What did I tell you to do with negative angles? Find the positive angle. Okay, 5 pi over 4 is actually in the third quadrant. So you can't go directly below it. You've got to go directly above Okay, either way, you cross over the x-axis. So really, negative 5 pi over 4 is the exact same thing as positive 3 pi over 4. So the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative square root 2 over 2, but we want the secant, so we've got to flip it over. So that's negative 2 over the square root of 2. We don't leave radicals in the denominator, so we need to rationalize. So we get negative 2 square root of 2 over 2, and we need to cancel out those 2's. So the secant of negative 5 pi over 4 is equivalent to negative 2. Now let me show you how you can check this into your calculator. Okay, I want the exact value. I want negative square root of 2. But you can check this. Make sure you're in radian mode. Okay, make sure you're in radian mode. Now, unfortunately, your calculator does not have a secant button. This is where you've got to know that secant is equivalent to 1 over cosine. So you've got to do 1 over cosine and just type in that angle, negative 5 pi over 4. And it's going to give you a nasty decimal, but to check and see if you got the same value, just type in what you said the answer was. I said the answer was negative square root 2. And when I press enter, those decimals are the exact same thing. So negative square root of 2 is the correct answer. <clears throat> okay. One more. Cotangent of 4 pi over 3. Okay. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Well, if tangent is sine over cosine, that means the reciprocal is going to be cosine over sine. Okay. Tangent was sine over cosine, so that means cotangent is reciprocal is cosine over sine. <clears throat> so 4 pi over 3, my over 3 angles, cosine is 1 half, and 4 over 3 is a little bit greater than 1, so we're in the third quadrant, so both of these are negative, so that's negative 1 half over negative square root 3 over 2. And you can look at your unit circle there to make sure that I'm telling the truth. Okay, now, to simplify this, first of all, negative divided by a negative is positive, okay? When we divide a fraction by a fraction, you all remember what happens? Top stays the same. We multiply by the reciprocal. So those twos cancel. There's still one on top, though. One over the square root of three. We don't want to leave it like that. We've got to rationalize. So that is equal to the square root of three over 3. This is one that I would definitely check. I would definitely check this one. Uh, so cotangent is 1 over the tangent. 4 pi over 3. Fingers crossed that that is equivalent to the square root of 3 over 3. But you got to make sure that you close your parentheses after that first 3. If you don't, your calculator is going to divide 3 by 3 and get 1 and take the square root and say that the answer is 1. It is not 1. It is the square root of 3 over 3.